Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series and I'm your host Dr Brett Palmer. In the Explain series we take a topic of sexual health and explain it. This week it's syphilis. So you're probably wondering why have I picked syphilis this week? Well, um, I've seen uh, only today uh, a couple of cases of uh, syphilis. Uh, it's becoming increasingly more common. And when you look at the data in the UK, uh, in the last 10 years, it's gone up 140%. And if you're watching this and you're outside the UK and you're thinking, ooh, those uh, British are a little bit dirty, uh, well, it's got nothing to do with that because syphilis is growing over the last 10 years has gone up by about 140% everywhere, North America, South America, Africa, uh, Asia, everywhere where uh, there's been a liberation of uh, sexual attitudes and freedoms, which is a good thing. There's been an unfortunate rise in syphilis, which is obviously a bad thing. So what is, um, what is syphilis? Well, syphilis is caused by a bacteria and uh, the bacteria is called uh, Treponema uh, pallidum, uh, subspecies uh, pallidum. And you're probably thinking that's a bit of a odd name, why is that? Well, there's quite a few Treponema uh, species out there uh, that cause a wide range of disease. So in the uh, uh, equatorial or tropical regions of this planet, there are three diseases called yours, Pinta and Bejul. Uh, which are effectively various types of skin diseases, or Bejul is uh, what's called endemic syphilis. Um, these, those three diseases are completely different from sexually transmitted or sexually acquired syphilis, which we, we all know and don't love, uh, um, and is becoming uh, very, very uh, common nowadays. Um, and so all of those previous diseases, yours, Pinta and Bejul, uh, can cause a positive syphilis result. You only need to bear that in mind if you really live in the tropical regions. If you don't live in the tropical regions and you live in the uh, northern and southern uh, hemisphere, then if, you're, if you have a, a blood test for syphilis and it tests positive, uh, then chances are you've encountered or have uh, syphilis and so you need to be treated. Um, so you're probably thinking, well, how do I know if I've got syphilis? Well, the majority of people who have any form of sexually transmitted infection don't know they've got the infection, and syphilis is no different. Um, however, there are a, a few stages and uh, various symptoms uh, that may indicate that you have syphilis. Um, so if you've had any of these symptoms, which I'll explain in a moment, uh, you obviously need to get uh, tested and treated. But please note, you do need, if, you, if you're having um, a, a regular change in partners, then you need regular uh, testing for, se for all sexually transmitted infections. Um, and also if you're embarking on a new relationship, both of you uh, should be tested at the start of it. So what are the symptoms of syphilis? Well, uh, let's go back to uh, the actual bacteria itself. And so this uh, pallidum uh, bacteria looks like a corkscrew. And so the actual shape of the uh, bacteria is called a uh, spirochete. And it looks like a corkscrew. And because of bodily, bodily contact during sex, uh, a person uh, that has the disease when the skin touches and there's a little bit of a, an abrasion on the skin, a little breakage in the skin, um, the bacteria, which is in the screw state, gets into that abrasion and screws itself uh, literally into the body. So uh, the individual uh, who gets the disease uh, gets screwed by more than one thing. So uh, where that bacteria gets into the body, uh, that causes an ulcer. Uh, that also, they say is typically uh, painless, but uh, a good uh, 40%, if not more, uh, of the actual ulcers are a little bit tender and sometimes downright painful as well. Uh, that ulcer uh, can last from anywhere between two to six weeks, and uh, that particular ulcer has a, a name to it, and it's called a shanker. After the shanker has gone, uh, you get uh, secondary stage syphilis, uh, which can actually start even before. Um, uh, the ulcer has gone. And in secondary uh, syphilis, you get a rash. Uh, the rash is typically on the palms of the hand or the soles of the feet, and it can be quite uh, light. Uh, the rash can also be all over the body, but if it's on the palms of the hand or on the soles of the feet, uh, uh, it's syphilis until proven otherwise. Now, 
Uh, you're probably thinking, hmm, hang on a minute, this isn't quite uh, making sense. I haven't had an ulcer. How do I know if I've got an ulcer? Well, the ulcer is where the bacteria gets into the body, like I said before. But uh, it doesn't have to be on the outside of the body. It can be on the inside of the body. So if you're a man, so typical places for ulcer is on the penis. But depending on what you've been doing, it can be on the, uh, in the inside of the mouth, on the tongue, on the lips in the middle of the throat. And if it's painless, you won't know if you've got an ulcer in the back of your throat. Uh, it could also be uh, around the backside or in the rectum. And in women, it can be in all those places as well, uh, but, uh, uh, but it doesn't have to be on the outside of the vagina. It can be with inside of the vagina or even on the cervix. Um, and uh, I've also seen uh, shankers on the fingers as well. So, if you don't have, if so, if you haven't seen an ulcer, but you're having a, uh, 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 but you, but you are sexually active, and especially if you're changing uh, partners, but you've got a rash on your hands and the soles of your feet, uh, go to your doctor and, and get yourself checked out, especially if you haven't been checked out recently. Uh, the reason why you want to get treated isn't necessarily because of the ulcer, which looks a bit unpleasant, or because you've got a rash on your, your hands and feet. It's because of the other effects of syphilis. Uh, these effects can uh, cause uh, problems uh, with the brain. Uh, your hearing can go, your vision can go, and also your, uh, your mental ability, your cognition can also be knocked off quite severely as well. And after uh, a few years, you eventually come into uh, tertiary uh, syphilis. Now, if you don't have any symptoms at all, they class as uh, latent uh, syphilis. Uh, but tertiary syphilis is when uh, you have uh, certain symptoms and they fall into three categories. The first category is neurosyphilis. And uh, the most common, uh, one of the most common forms of neurosyphilis, especially in the past, was dementia. And so if you're an old person and you're going a little bit demented, you end up in hospital, uh, the hospital will probably do a syphilis screen as part of its uh, dementia uh, analysis on that individual. Uh, another thing that can go wrong is uh, cardiovascular systems. That's heart and arteries uh, can also be uh, affected by syphilis. Uh, so infection of the aorta, that's the main artery that leaves the heart, is called aortitis. Uh, and that can also lead on to things like aneurysms. And so you could be infected with syphilis 20 years ago. And so uh, you probably, these individuals won't automatically come to the sexual health uh, department. They would probably end up in cardiology. And not all cardiologists automatically do syphilis tests for every um, um, uh, aortitis or aneurysm they see. Um, but it's worth bearing in mind uh, if you have just been diagnosed with some cardiovascular problem especially if you're having a change of uh, partner uh, in the past. And the, the last one, which is very rare to see nowadays, is uh, gametus uh, syphilis, uh, sometimes also known as gametus syphilis as well. And what is gamma? Well, this is where it eats away at the cartilage uh, in your body. And so if you go onto the internet and put in uh, uh, gametus syphilis, you'll notice photographs of the nose being eaten away and the ears being eaten away. But it can also affect uh, all areas of the body, uh, including the skin, wherever there is uh, cart um, there's um, uh, cartilage, um, uh, uh, which could be affected by the syphilis um, uh, bacteria. Uh, all syphilis is, um, if caught early enough, is very, very treatable. Um, but if you leave it until you get to the tertiary stage and the tertiary uh, symptoms of syphilis, which I explained, um, uh, are not, unfortunately, uh, usually reversible. Uh, so that is why it's worth uh, getting tested and getting treated. And so what is the testing? Well, if you've got an ulcer, uh, the doctor should be able to take a scraping of that ulcer and look under the microscope and actually see uh, the spirochetes, which are the twirly bacteria, whizzing around. And I'll try and send a, a photo of that um, in my Instagram account, which should be uh, linked to this YouTube uh, channel. Uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if there's no doctors or nurses uh, there or they're not able to do um, uh, what's called dark round microscopy, they can do uh, a little scraping of it. It looks like a little tiny brush. Um, and they take a little scrape and that's to try and detect the DNA um, of the spirochetes uh, directly. Uh, another thing they can do is do a blood test. 
Now, one thing that's very important is if you've never had uh, any form of um, syphilis uh, uh, in the past and uh, no uh, treponema uh, bacteria infections, then your test will be negative. If you've had any treponema infection, your antibody test will be positive and will remain positive for life, even if you've cleared uh, the infection and even if you've been treated for the infection, it will remain positive. Your blood test will then go on to do another, uh, the lab will do another test, uh, and that's called uh, a TPPA test. Uh, that will also remain positive, but that test is specific for syphilis, and that's the type of syphilis that's passed on sexually. Uh, and then after that's positive, they'll do another test called an RPR test. And the reason why I'm getting very technical is because the RPR value is very important. And you should know what your RPR value is, especially if you've tested positive for syphilis. Uh, simply because that is the only way of measuring whether you've had a reinfection um, and it is active in your body. Now, the RPR, I'll explain a little bit about the RPR test. The RPR test is uh, basically a set of dilutions. So each time you dilute uh, your blood sample, uh, it gets diluted by 50% uh, each time. So you have a, a neat, pure sample, then it gets diluted. So that's a one in two sample. Then it gets diluted again, a one in four sample, diluted again, one in 16 sample, and it goes on, 1 in 32, 1 in 64, 1 in 128, 1 in 256. You get the picture. And the more dilutions you need before the test uh, stops going positive shows you how active the infection is. So if you've never had syphilis, uh, you will have uh, zero, uh, or neat, or negative even. Um, uh, but, if you've had, uh, but if you've got active syphilis, uh, then it will uh, go. It can go all the way uh, to the uh, other end of the scale uh, and be very. Um, uh, it can have a high result. So, for example, one in two hundred and fifty-six. That means you've got active syphilis, and your body is probably teeming uh, with the bacteria spirochetes. The reason why that's important is because after you've had treatment, and treatment usually comes in the form of penicillin. If you're allergic to penicillin, it's usually doxycycline. If you're pregnant and can't take doxycycline um, or penicillin, there are other alternatives. Uh, but you need to be treated for a period of time and you need to be followed up for one year. After one year, you will be told what your RPR level is. In other words, what your discharge RPR is. So when you're discharged from medical care, and uh, that means you're allowed to, uh, you don't have to come back anymore. Uh, your RPR level may be one in two or neat. If you're lucky, it may even be negative. You need to commit that number to memory or write it down. So when you go for another blood test uh, in the future, uh, you can tell the doctor there that you have had syphilis, that has been treated and your baseline RPR is whatever the doctor previously told it was. For example, one in two or uh, neat or negative. It's vitally important that you remember this because some people do get over-treated because they can't remember what their RPR level is. Uh, obviously, um, prevention is always better than cure. And uh, how do you prevent syphilis? Condoms and making sure that when you start a new relationship, you both get tested, ideally before you have sex. Otherwise, if you don't, then use condoms uh, and then uh, try and get tested. Um, the only way we can stop syphilis as a species um, is simply because is the only way is is, is testing and testing uh, regularly and often, and uh, making sure we're uh, keeping in contact with our sexual partners to make sure uh, that they are also negative. And if you are positive, you tell your sexual partners that you are positive, so they can get tested and treated. Uh, one thing uh, also to bear in mind is when you do get tested. Uh, there's a, something called a window period for all diseases, and that's when you can first catch the disease to when it actually shows up in a test. And some diseases, the window period is very short. So gonorrhea, for example, that's a really short window period, it's about five days. Um, uh, but uh, for syphilis, the vast majority of people, uh, the test will become positive within uh, four weeks. But to be 100% sure, it can be 90 days, uh, which is uh, uh, three months. So uh, there's a quick whirlwind uh, trip uh, around syphilis. Uh, syphilis is readily treatable and there's nothing to be scared of. Uh, you get tested, 
you get treated and you carry on having a good sex life. That's the important uh, message uh, with syphilis. You can get further information uh, from uh, many organisations, so the CDCC website. Uh, there's also information from the um, uh, British Association of Sexual Health and HIV, otherwise known as BASH. Um, there's also information from the planning, uh, the Family Planning Association and uh, also information from NHS Choices um, uh, website and also Public Health England website as well. These are a few fairly uh, robust and uh, good places to go for further information about syphilis. There are others as well, but yeah, make sure it's a, a bona fide place. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a healthy uh, and good uh, sexual health. And if you like, please share, uh, press like and uh, subscribe for our, our next uh, weekly episode will be along uh, next week. Take care and look after yourself. Thank you.